Hello and welcome to the Garrity Talks. My name is Lucia Ongai and I am the co-founder of the Garrity Awards. Just like the awards, this series will put in the spotlight some of the industry's true change makers within the aim to drive progress in the industry at a global scale. Today we have three amazing guests from Germany who were all uh, part of our jury. So Antoinette Hus is our ambassador this year for the Garrity Executive Jury. She is a feminist dragon ant mix that loves to pitch and lead teams to successful success and happiness. She's an international strategy and transformation director that has worked in various countries for network and independent agencies. As a side project, she is co-writing a coming of age story of two feisty girls in the Amsterdam of the early 80s to be published this spring. This spring, right? This summer by now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so uh, then we have Brita Butch, Chief Creative Officer, Campaign of Track. She started her copywriter career at the legendary agency Hildman, Simon, Rempen and Schmitz, where she, won her, <laughs> where she won her first ADC medal. She later worked for KNSK, BBDO, Mech Berlin, and in 2010, she was the first woman to be appointed Chief Creative Officer in Germany for Macan, managing the creative direction of Hamburg, Dusseldorf, Munich, and Berlin offices. She is member of the board for the Art Directors Club in Germany and has been in the jury of major international awards and is part of the executive jury of Garrity this year as well. And finally, Francisca Mas, Chief Creative Officer of Great Germany, an empathetic, convincing, dynamic, and goal-oriented person. Francisca has worked in agencies such as Jung von Matt, Service Plan, and Springer and Jacobi. Reliable, optimistic, enthusiastic, motivating, and precise. She was a spokeswoman of the Executive Committee of the Com Clubs Bavaria and member of the Art Directors Club in Germany. She was featured in Horizons 99 Women in Marketing, Advertising, and Media and part of the WMB's 100 Brains of the German ad industry. She has also been in many international juries and was part of Garrity's Grand Jury last year. So welcome and thanks for joining us for this uh, Garrity talk about uh, German creativity. So let's start with the first question. Do you think there are certain characteristics that make German advertising different to others? Is there something specific and immediately recognizable in campaigns from Germany? Who would like to start? Well, start with the Germans. <laughs> <laughs> Rita, would you like to start? Or? Yeah, I, I can start. Like, uh, uh, it, the, uh, for me, this is a very interesting question because uh, when I asked this question to myself, I, was, I really had the feeling, yeah, there is something, but you, you cannot really see that immediately, uh, but you can feel it always. And for me, it's this, the, the, the point that the Germans are very, very good in using their heads, and sometimes they're not so super good in using their bellies. And when I see sometimes campaigns from from other countries, especially from, from America or England, then I can always feel there's a special human touch in it and there's always a deep human truth in it or a, a good human insight. And sometimes I miss, miss that in the, in the German campaigns. But on the other hand, uh, the Germans are very, very good in, in this uh, design thing because maybe it's a little bit like engineering, uh, defining rules for brands and doing all this engineering stuff for a brand. And I think I still have the feeling that this is typical for, for, for German creativity. But yeah. maybe we have a different opinion about that. I'm not so sure. I, I also found it a really tough question, to be honest, um, when I asked myself. Um, because I had the same feeling. Yes, there is maybe something, but I can't name it. So. Um, for me, it's really, really not to answer it <laughs> because I just don't know. Um, when I um, when I when I think about UK or something like this, it's really very very easy to say what's the difference. But um, no, I don't. I I think I wouldn't say this. There's, there's something that makes German campaigns recognizable. I yeah. 
as, as a duchy that has been working only for like three and a half, four years in Germany and also in international agencies, I have not seen many German campaigns as yet. Um, I do watch German television, but I don't think that we want to go there. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, but what was interesting when I was working at DDB in Berlin, we had a um, Brazilian ECD and his Brazilian CD um, when I entered. So there was this, there was a sort of um, very stereotypical, but it was true, Brazilian suave going around the agency. It was very... And then we shifted to new a new couple of ECDs and they came from Mecklenburg for Pommern. Um, <laughs> and they were... I love them in the sense that to me, they were very Dutch. Um, in essence, they were so very clear and um, could write everything down on, on, on the back of a beer coaster. Um, but, but, but the song and dance had gone. That it was like, the, the, in this sense, I do understand that the belly, the sort of, um, I don't know, but this might have been just these two particular um, Brazilian and, and, and German creatives. But for me, it was an interesting switch. Um, and also to see that that what I now consider to be German creativity is very close to the Dutch. We use a tad more humor in most of our campaigns, but it feels that we're close. And do you think it's uh, maybe you have to choose either being more like the Brazilian that you mentioned or like the Germans, or is it possible to mix like maybe structure and uh, Brazilianness? <laughs> I think we do that in our market because yeah. uh, most of the agencies uh, are working with international teams, especially in Berlin. Um, so you have so many people from different countries in, in the agency. I work in Hamburg, but I live in Berlin, which is <laughs> okay, okay, my problem, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I love it to, to live like that. So, but I think we do that because everywhere, uh, uh, because um, when people from different countries come together, something new is, uh, is exploding. And, uh, and this is what we need from our talents, uh, even if they're female or homosexual or something, or, uh, it's, or, or from Brazil or from mecklenburg vorpommern um, We just so need this different Maybe. influences for, for getting new ideas. So. I think that uh, maybe is the German thing to sort of be really good at, at, at getting all these influences, keeping it all together and, and mixing and merging that to a good end result. Mm -hmm. I think that's what I really see. Okay, that's interesting. And what is your all time favorite German campaign? Okay, from my point of view, um, it's still Hornbach. Oh no! Yeah, I, 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 I agree. Yeah, 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 because this is this is this is the bold, crazy, brilliantly crafted, uh, even based on a human truth, and and they maintained this quality since twenty years. I I was sure you would say the same. So. <laughs> Definitely. Yes. For me, it is also Hornbach. Um, they are successful for such a long time. They have been on, you know, in the minute you see it, in the second you see the commercial, you know it's from Hornbach. Yeah. So unique. Um, they have such an amazing strategy behind it. Um, it's, yeah. Yeah. And it's a real campaign. It's nothing uh, uh, only done for awards. Yeah. So, uh, it's, it's, yeah. it's a real campaign, you really can see that. Yeah. And uh, I think this is really the boldest campaign of the last 20 years. Definitely. And also it really, it, it makes no excuses. It sells the products yeah. Yeah. Um, to the audience. And, and it's also language wise, I'm not a, a native Dutch German speaker, but I, it's so well done. It's, yeah. sort of, it's a joy. It's really, mm -hmm. I'm jealous. <laughs> like we all. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's been running for 20 years now. That's a lot. Yeah, yeah, I would say so. I think uh, it was the first client of the agency Heimat. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think they and they and they celebrate uh, celebrated last year the, of the year before the they 20 celebration of the birthday party was, I think, two years ago. 
So okay, a very long time. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, which campaigns have you been most excited by in the past 12 months and why? Which have been like special 12 months, I would say for everybody. Maybe Francesca, you will start because when I say something, of course, I, I can stop. <laughs> and um, I have thought about this too, um, very long, to be honest, because I have a feeling there wasn't so many campaigns out there, um, really campaigns. Um, and if so, it was, of course, often around the Corona theme and the COVID topic. And so um, if I had to choose one and I was just really because I, I didn't notice one that was stick in my mind. So if I have to say one, I would probably say one of our own clients because I was really um, proud that they did it <laughs> and um, that they had the balls and they did it um, despite of Corona um, and that's Barmer. We had a um, brand campaign and I loved it. So for me, that was the one um, that sticked in my mind and not be just because it is from us um, because it was one of the rare ones I saw that were not playing with the COVID topic. Uh, so for me, I was mostly annoyed by, because I, I really had the feeling of, I saw so many campaigns that celebrated the real heroes, the nurses, the caregivers and and so many brands wanted to capitalize on that. And, uh, but for these people, nothing changed. Huh? The people are poorly paid still and uh, no one really thinks about them, not even this brand. So I said, oh, we love you so much in these times. But there was one campaign I really loved and this was uh, Zalando because they had a simple message and the simple message was we will embrace again. Wir werden uns wieder umarmen, which was for me um, like a ray of light in this dark winter. And uh, they had simple, great pictures. And this is absolutely a simple idea, but they really touched me. So, and they say, we will embrace again. And uh, this comes from a fashion brand. I really love that because there was even in this campaign was such a deep truth yes and we we miss that so much and for me this was much more powerful than all this oh we love you nurses supermarket shears and all these people yes so, so far from, from my point of view Zalando did the best job in this in, in the German market yeah for me for me it's hard because I yeah I haven't seen a lot of Dutch of, of German advertising what I did see was what the city of Berlin is doing uh, outdoor um, like the, the mask and off campaign. And I think that's really well done. It's sort of, it's well written and it's cheeky. Um, I, I, I hope my city of Amsterdam will become as cheeky as that ever, because I really think Berlin knows how to touch uh, a certain tone that sort of talk to its citizens. Uh, so it's the outdoor campaign that the city does um, for the uh, everything you need to do to be COVID safe. Campaign-wise, I thought everything was shite, really shite, just COVID campaigns, blah. I laughed only about, a, a, or, or I had some good feelings about a UK campaign for Maltesers, the chocolate thingies that you bite and then they crunch lovely. Um, and that was just six women getting on a, getting on a Zoom call, uh, talking about real shit and eating Maltesers. And that was such a lo-fi, low budget. Um, but the, you know, it wasn't. It was as if I wasn't watching actors, as if it wasn't even scripted. It was a very thin line between um, an ad and and a real thing. I loved it. It was done by uh, AMV BBDO, but not in Germany. Sorry. <laughs> no worries. And Antoinette, I read you will, well, as you mentioned, you will be releasing your book uh, in the summer. Um, can you tell us about it? Yes, of course. Um, it's why I'm freelancing at the moment. My, it's weird. My husband's a writer, so that's his job, um, um, a literary writer. And after two years of DDB, um, he was like, why don't you finish the book that you started like 15 years ago with your best friend? And I said yes, and my best friend said yes again. So for the past 
year we wanted to work on the book, but then pitches came in between a pitch with Media Monks, a pitch with DDB Dubai. It's sort of, but still, we've been working on it now for eight straight months. It's about two girls that grow up in the Amsterdam of the 1980s um, and not completely. Um, by accident, my best friend and I grew up in the Amsterdam of the 1980s. And we feel that that time was so free. We were so carefree. We did whatever we wanted. Um, we went hitchhiking to France when we were 15. We were clubbing from 14 till 18. And somehow um, we survived without um, huge problems. And our parents were so busy still finding themselves that they were actually sort of far far away so it, it felt like an interbellum to us this this time of growing up in the 80s is sort of um, a time we would want to recreate so on the one hand it's a it's a nostalgic book um, and and it's like two girls going on adventures and on the other hand I think we make a thing a, a quite feminist point about women um, then and now or girls then and now and um, and how the world treats them and it was supposed to be the spring it will be <laughs> this summer or this autumn because actually we so want to have a party to launch the book to sort of oh. also reconnect with everything we everyone we knew in that time so i want an 80s dance party and um so it will not be launched we do have a publisher but she understands but it will not be launched before we can go <laughs> out on the party <laughs> Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I, I very much look forward to go clubbing again. <laughs> and it doesn't seem it's going to be like right now. Yeah. And uh, Antoinette, in one of your conferences, you spoke about how creatives and strategists should focus more on left field science, art, and weird things. Can you tell us more about this topic and why do you think they should? Yeah, I think most planners are raised to be boring. So, um, um, I mean, there's craft, there's deep craft and hard thinking to planning, um, but it's not about coloring be it within the lines. Great strategists and great planners should sort of open their minds, not just to culture, I, I understand the whole culture thing, but also to, I call it left field signs or left field art or things that are just off the radar because if we all see the same things and we all wear the same hats and we all then we're just we'll all make the same campaigns and we all speak to people in the same way so and also i'm a science fiction fan i used to be a gamer so my 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 interests go more into the world of of, of tech and of weird tech i mean i i I have the chip in my hand myself, you know, there's, there's, I, I love um, um, being on that edge of things and I hope and I, yeah, I hope and I want to push planners to be a bit weirder. Of course they need the craft, but get out there and, and have a life, see the world, do something off color. That would be my, um, my want. <laughs> Francisca, I read in an interview that you wanted to get Great Germany back to the top five and that you trusted your network and luck to achieve this. How is your balance after these almost two years and what were the biggest challenges? Um, I think um, the biggest challenge were definitely COVID. <laughs> um, um, I think um, we are in a good state right now, but um, of course last year was tough for every creative. Um, we didn't send out any stuff to any award shows. Most of the award shows were cancelled, so the top five was <laughs> hard to reach. <laughs> um, and of course, we had also a lot of topics um, regarding structure, um, we structure in Dusseldorf, building up our Hamburg office, um, doing a lot of pitches, doing a lot of work for Gray. And um, I think, yeah, Corona throwed us back, I would say seven months. <laughs> Um, because of course everything stopped and um, yeah, but I think we are good now and um, I'm really looking forward to this year. 
And you're also a member of Great Global Creative Board. What do you find most interesting and enriching in your exchanges and discussions with the board? Um, I think what really is cool, it's, it's, it's often funny because um, of course I'm the only German one and um, everyone has an opinion about Germans because they know the Germans from juries and we are all, always so exact and precise and we bring back everything on the table that was there before and know everything and so it's often really funny. Um, and sometimes it, it feels like I'm the annoying German girl who brings up everything. <laughs> but um, it's really cool because we are so many different people and we just have so many different cultures and um, everyone has another view on stuff. And sometimes someone from Latam says something when I, and I think, right, yeah, I never thought about this. So um, that's really fun. And we are discussing um, in the first year, it was more about discussing award work and the best work in the network worldwide. But um, the role of the board changed a bit um, with restructure of Gray end of last year. Mm. So um, now we are also doing pitches with the board. So the biggest clients were pitched by us. And um, that's a lot of fun mm. because we have so many different opinions. and. Um, yeah, so I think for me, the most um, fun stuff is to see how different every one of us ticks and um, what hooks us and um, that we have often very tough discussions about the work. And uh, Brita, you studied social and economic communications in university. How did you end up working in advertising? Good question. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God, I ended up in advertising, are you sure? No, uh, I have to say I'm a kind of uh, universal dilettante. Is this the right word? Uh, yeah, I'm a universal dilettante. I can do many things well, but nothing really brilliant. So, uh, okay, writing is a talent, but I'm not, I'm not brilliant. Huh? So, but, but I'm good in a lot of different things. And uh, I, when I was younger, I really thought advertising is the right place to be for me, for such a universal dilettante like me. And I have to say, I had a fantastic professor at the University of Arts here in Berlin, and he brought really the celebrities of advertising at this time, which is a long time ago, um, to our lectures, like Konstantin Jakobi or Jeremy from Matt. And, and they were so charismatic personalities and, and good looking and all this stuff. And I really thought, oh, advertising is sexy. Uh, I can really say there's nothing sexy any, uh, anymore about advertising. It's just hard work. Uh, sometimes it's, it's, it's nice, sometimes it's fun, but sexy, I wouldn't use this word anymore for advertising. But in, in, when I was younger, I really thought, wow, advertising is sexy. What word would you use? Yeah, it's hard work for me. Appetizing hard work, hard work, hard work. Mm -hmm. and uh, and and the, and the and the fun is a little bit gone from my point of view. And you have been CCO at Track for four years now. What is your balance of these years, and what have been the biggest challenges? Yeah, um, I have to say our Track ship sails uh, quite well in this crazy wild sea. Uh, but um, yeah, what's the reason for that? Because I think uh, we don't try to be able to do everything. We understand branding, okay. We understand data, okay. We understand uh, personalized advertising and, and we know which message makes sense at which touch point, all this stuff. And, uh, and we love tech in uh, our agency and our, um, yeah, our main sentence is always, uh, we understand branding and the connected world. And that makes us fit for the future. And it, it's still working because we know there are a lot of agencies outside, uh, out, outside which have, they, they really have problems. But uh, with this mixture of branding, data, and personalized advertising, we are still successful, which is good. And my biggest challenge is, I think, especially in, in, in these times, to really to encourage people, and to encourage the people I work with, um, to ignite passion to them, or 
I think because we all work in the home office now, um, it's sometimes really hard to stay in contact, um, to give them a good feeling, good feedback. Uh, uh, for me, this is the biggest challenge at the moment. Um, but I give my best to be passionate, to give them ideas and to get something back. But sometimes I have the, the feeling, okay, we, we all live in this home office situation. And, and have this kind of depression. I, I always try to fight against this uh, because Antoinette knows that she follows me on, on, in the social media channels. I invented the glamourary, wearing something glittery every day. At the moment, I celebrate with February, being fabulous every day with uh, vegetables. And I know this sounds crazy, but this it is, is my way to- It's really helpful. I love it. <laughs> I, it's my way to, to to have some fun <laughs> yeah. and uh, I, I try to yeah yeah I try uh, for me really the, the hardest challenge is to encourage the people stay in contact with them getting good work done and yeah and it's not easy and a question for the three of you what things have you figured out about your work not that long ago that you think would have helped you know in the beginning of your career ah. <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> oh, I have an answer I would say just not to worry so much I used to worry too much when I was younger uh, it, uh, advertising it is not worth worrying that's for me <laughs> the biggest thing but I understand this since two years so it's, <laughs> it's, just, it's, it's a new thing for me because I always in this worrying oh my god the next campaign oh my god the client don't love me oh my god uh, fuck it so uh, it's advertising it's not worth that you are always in the varying situation hey that home office works <laughs> yeah. um because i a year ago um every one of us would have said no 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 we have to be in the office everything else is not working and now we see it works and it works to be honest better than we thought yeah that's true mm. that's true <laughs> i think what i learned too late um is that not everybody is like me it's maybe a weird thing to realize um i am always one of the boys i don't have imposter syndrome i don't see a glass ceiling i mean i look like a girl but i am actually one of the boys and that means that I have had, let's say, too little empathy or too little, um, um, I noticed not enough that a lot of women um, come from a different place. And I don't know why I am um, um, uh, different in that sense. So what I learned and, and what the past couple of years have helped me learn is that I actually need to elevate and help people that are not like me, which is weird because usually you sort of, you, you, you tend to go to the people that are more like you and you sort of with them you hug and them you mentor and them you, you lift as you grow. And I learned that if, I, if, if our industry has to become different and it has to, then actually I need to, um, I need to go the extra mile for people that are not my twins and that I might not at first glance even sometimes um, like that much because I have this very specific makeup why I function really well in a patriarchy and a male dominated world. Let's not forget that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I, I think that's the, the main thing I learned. I didn't learn it through COVID, but I did learn that only to my shame in the past couple of years. And the last question for the three of you as well. So after a pandemic 2020, what do we expect to find in campaigns for this year? Or what kind of stories or ideas would you like to see and brands to tell us? Something with fun and humor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good answer. <laughs> Lighthearted. <laughs> I, yeah. I, yeah. yeah, for me, it's even, um, I want to I, ask them. Yeah, oh man, 
lighthearted things through, but also, yeah, I mean, that, it's always the serious topics that then come up. I'd like to see more diversity. I'd like to see, and, and we need to see that. But after this COVID thing, with, later. <laughs> yeah, I'm so with Britta, we need, we need fun. Advertising can really bring lightness. Um, and let's go and look for that. And let's go and look for the clients that want that. Um, that would be amazing. Yeah. But to make it happy and a little bit German again, <laughs> is um, uh, I think this this faster, higher, further thing, and this more and more and more and more growth, and think this is a little bit over, and um, and I hope that brands will give us an answer how how we can live a good life in harmony with the planet, uh, in responsibility for humanity. And I think in this time, we really found out how little we really need. And uh, But um, I think maybe it will swing again in the other direction. I don't know. But but I think brand, brands can, can tell us something, uh, how to live a good life. And, uh, and even yeah. just maybe a fun life, but even a, a good life in, with a deeper meaning. And I hope I can see this kind of campaigns. I, I'm, I'm afraid that the biggest thing we need to solve um, is that we all work for growth, growth of our own company, growth yeah, of yeah. Our brand, growth of how they sell their, their, their products and services. And actually um, it's untenable. And, and I'm starting to understand that, that we, yeah, growth needs to be redefined in another way, but um, especially network agencies that I have worked for a lot, um, are really not ready for that, nor are the brands they work for. Um, so that's an interesting juxtaposition. We work, we work to make people grow and growth is actually not a very modern thing. So advertising has become in that sense, very old fashioned, the whole, the whole spirit of it. And, and don't give me like, ah, but the purpose marketing and da da da, that's not what we mean. We, in essence, we work to sell things. Yes. Which, is, which is a lovely trade. But if the whole universe is actually going towards a place where growth is no longer sustainable, well, that, that, that is something, I mean, it would be nice if the Khan Lions would do a year around that or the Gary Awards or anyone in charge. Um, <laughs> that's my, um, I, I would, I, it would be a dear thing if we would solve that. Yeah. Doing good work for for a good reason for good things. <laughs> so <laughs> that would be that would be nice. <laughs> Francesca, what do you think? Yeah, definitely, definitely, you are right. But still, first I want to have a bit more fun. After. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, you know, so this let's comes go from yourself, Francisca. This comes not from advertising. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> so let's go for a funny 2021 for all of us. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us uh, in this guarantee talk and uh, wishing you all the best for this year. Thanks a lot for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.